Hey Ruganath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from Super Soul Farm, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center New York, the stupid ass. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to Thursday's study discussion. Discussion. Teasing out of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the sacred literature that connects the jiva, the spirit soul, with the source. The Pur- Purusha, Bhagawan, Ishwara, sweet baby Krishna. You turned the V in Bhagavan into the W, and I picked that up. Bhagawan, you like that? Bhagawan. Sometimes the V. Bhagawan. <laughs> we're trying to hey you're doing a different angle today from your house too we're doing a different angle too oh that's right yeah we're trying different angles okay interesting we didn't well, that was be- not planned we can no. call that a krishna miracle we're both doing different angles i, I mean i think you, this angle for you is a little sterile though I it's know. a little sterile but you know what we're going to decorate all right but it's there's no distance so sometimes i don't you know. know what i know but you know what? It was right sort of where our altar is. We felt it was too congested around the deities. Okay, all right. Well, you want so. to consider you want to consider that for sure. Yeah. Hey, so um, what's going on? I'm a We're going to Florida. We're going to Florida, oh, man. <laughs> you, do you want to know or not? No, that was sort of like, how are you? Because I want to tell you how I am. <laughs> well, it's not even how. Yeah. <laughs> all right, go ahead. Say what you We're have. going to Florida. And we decided not to drive. You're going to fly. We're flying. Okay, that makes sense. Flying. We're flying. I'm excited. So that means we can do the show tomorrow. Yes. Oh yeah, we could do the show tomorrow. Okay. We can't do it Saturday. No, we oh, will you're going to do it Saturday. Saturday. I because you're it. not involved in a run. That doesn't mean. Oh, I see what's going on here. You trying to <laughs> usurp the show? Make it the Kastuba show. No, we're going to have Isn't an interview with Buta, interview with Buta Bhavana Prabhu. Fascinating character. Okay, we're looking forward to that. Yeah, Londoner. Uh, he, he he's one of the devotees that was really spearheaded the Pandava Sena in at the Bhaktivedanta Manor, like this whole training of young people getting into spirituality. He's like he, he's also like one of these kind of career coach kind of people and stuff. But he's very hmm. he's got he has a powerful way of building bhakti into all of these things. So uh, he's we're, a we're he's a good guy. That's going to be a good interview. I'm going to be at Rathiatra dancing in front of Lord Jagannath. In St. Augustine, by the way, um, locals in northern Florida, I think I'm going to do a program the following Saturday in Alaska. Down there for a while. I'm down there for a week, buddy. Okay. Yeah. Where are you stay- who are you staying with? I got an Airbnb uh, in St. I just realized that my kids just want to play with their friends, so I'm just going to go to the beach. So you're just dropping the kids off in Alaska and you're going to the beach? Yeah, and I'll go to Alaska and visit. I'll go to the Sunday feast on Sunday and... Okay, and the kids are running far. around with their friends the whole time anyway. Kids so. running around with their friends doing the kid thing. All right. Yeah. Um, all right. So, uh, Miss Mara, any announcements? Yep. Back to your recovery group meeting today at noon, and there's an asana with Josh Kane for our Patreon members tomorrow morning at 10.30. Okay. So we'll do Q&A on Sunday then and do the interview day on Saturday. Is that right? That's right. Okay. Yeah. Interview Saturday, Q&A. Sunday. We're doing last calls for our Italy retreat. 
it is the whole thing is zipping up. If you didn't register, but we're thinking about it, because some people are saying, "What? Well, wait a second. Do you have to register? You got to register for this <laughs> thing. Come on. I got to hold your hand through this whole process. <laughs> Tell you just roll in on your scooter and uh, your Vespa and like you're in. <laughs> oh, man. That's go to wizardofthesages.com slash events. Go to the Italian retreat. And then click it on, click on it and register. We got to figure this out, guys. It's getting zipped up like today or tomorrow. Um, really looking forward to that. And uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's that's it. Okay. That's our announcements, buddy. So let's hear here. Uh, You're a nugget today, my friend. Yes, please. Who's it from? This is from the diary of Anne Frank. OK. What an amazing person. What, what an amazing, amazing person, diary. huh? Yeah. Why do I confuse her with Helen Keller? She's not Helen <laughs> Keller. <laughs> I was like, wow, I didn't know person. she could write a diary. <laughs> in Braille? Was this in Braille? <laughs> <laughs> Rag was feeling better, apparently. <laughs> oh, it's, it hurts. It hurts when I'm laughing. <laughs> okay. okay. But, hold it. Sober up, Rogan. This is like serious stuff. I, yeah. Like, I mean, she was living. Anne, uh, Frank. If Anne Frank was a young girl living in hiding yeah. it, during Nazi Germany. She was Jewish. She was living in hiding in like, what was it? Like a uh, like a, a secret hiding place in the wall like or something? It was kind of like an attic or something like that. But they kind of, they, they, they sealed They tried to hide it. You know that when where I grew up in Connecticut, there were a lot of those secret hiding places and houses because they had the Underground Railroad, which is where they smuggled slaves up from the um, from the from the south. Yeah, and so they, they would find like closets that opened up, and you would no go kidding. down into tunnels that would just go on. They didn't even know where the tunnel ended. Amazing! It's amazing having to live like that. You know what I mean? Especially like you know, hundred miles from here, um, but. Uh, you know, this is uh, anyway. I'm going to get into this too. Yes, in a moment. Anne Frank. I've got I've got some opinions. So, so, so she was with her entire family. She was. How old was Anne Frank when she wrote the diary? Mara knows. I think she, she got it for her 13th birthday. I was just Wikipedia okay. Anne Frank. Okay. She got it for her 13th birthday, and she died when she was 15. Okay, you're so, making sure it wasn't in Braille, Mara. So <laughs> maybe it wasn't Braille. She's a 13 year old girl with her entire family. I think you know, like hiding in an attic or something like that um from the mm. nazis I, I think i think they were in like um holland or something like that when they're hiding right something yeah oh in holland oh jeez i can't, in amsterdam holland's not the the, the tragic part of this right <laughs> oh my god they were in holland oh. <laughs> <laughs> they were in amsterdam for like how long <laughs> Uh, okay, it's not funny. It's a serious not funny. But sober up. Not only this is it a little great, but honestly, she's so impressive that under such um, dire circumstances, she kept such a beautiful attitude. You know, I think that's one of the most inspiring parts about uh, that diary. And um, you can see she was very insightful as just a 13 year old. You know, she was very insightful. Mm -hmm. And I believe that insight has a lot to do with a, a type of spiritual insight, you know, that was allowing her to view her very dire, materially, externally, very dire circumstances from a, an angle where she kept her, I guess you could say, like purity, you know, the purity of heart, you know. Um, uh, like it didn't make her a hateful, a hateful being. Yeah. You know, you have every reason, you know, have every like, it seems like you get every pass to just be hateful and bitter and angry at the world. And she's going to shed some light. Yeah. Here. And even fearful, you know, like, you know, <laughs> she wasn't bitter. She wasn't fearful. She, you know, she anyway, let's read what she has to say. It comes through on a, a I hate to score all this, but these diaries from young kids are quite insightful. There's an, another favorite like diary of mine. I can't remember her name. Maybe you could find this, but this, you know, this young girl famous who was uh, her whole family was killed by native Americans. And then she got accepted into the tribe, whatever tribe it was. Oh. And she ended up marrying into the tribe and becoming like an integral part of that tribe. Yeah, was that from the dancing with the wolves? Is that part of that? I know there's one, you know, that dancing with, wasn't it a movie? I think it was a movie based on a book, if I remember correctly. And there's Dancing one. with 
I don't know. There was one woman in the in that story who was. I don't know. There's a lot, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, colonists. how come little boys don't write diaries? What's with us? <laughs> yeah, what's <laughs> up? <laughs> We're just angry and hateful. <laughs> okay, I guess that's destructive. <laughs> You know what's interesting about young boys? What, what's they are thing? freaking destructive. Yeah, you well, never hear about little girls doing this. You know, we would just, has... we would just break things, just no, like in, in great that was joy, you. in great <laughs> just joy and hate. That's like, true. We did a bit of that. Just that was hate. destroying that was things, hate. wrecking stuff. No, hold it, hold it, hold it. I mean, boys do need to get it, get that energy out a little bit. But I don't think with hate. Where's that coming from? Hate. I don't know where it was coming. Frustration. I don't know. <laughs> Spilling things too, Rogan. Oh, very funny. Very funny. Okay, <laughs> here's Anne Frank. Let's continue on, Squirrel Man. In spite of everything. Yes. And everything was like everything. Our our family, our, our all our community has been thrown in concentration camps, oh possibly killed. My family's it. on the run. I just remember the satanic dream I had last night. No, we're gonna don't squirrel now. We, I'm we not gonna. It started on I that. wouldn't even share okay. the crazy dream that just popped into my head that I had last night. Stay focused here. In spite of everything, I still believe that people are really good at heart. Wow, that's yeah. huge. Even though they're being okay. so cruel, I mean, bombs are being dropped. People, yeah. she's most, she, she must be seeing people getting yeah, called people off. People being hunted down. Hunted like animals. I simply can't build up my hopes on a foundation consisting of confusion, misery, and death. Right? So she's here, here she's saying, it's like, how can I have, how can I even move forward if if I just see that everything is just miserable? And, and there's no, you can't move forward in this world if you just can't, if nothing to believe in. And, and it's, I find this really interesting. You know, it's, it's almost like, um, it's almost like she, I'm not saying that she did. I don't believe that she did. I, I highly doubt that she did. But it's almost as if she had, you know, been reading Eastern philosophy, right? Because the, the, even the language that she's using here, like when she says, I simply can't build my hopes on a foundation consisting of confusion, misery, and death. Confusion, misery, and death are due to the constantly shifting material energy. Right? Sure. It means we become out of touch with our nature, which is eternal and beyond death. And so she's saying the material world has no foundation. You know, it's like mm. if, if, I, if I'm if i confused and miserable and fearful of death, it means that there's I have no foundation. I'm not standing on a firm foundation. And then even as she continues, it goes deeper into this. Okay, my friend, this is good, and we haven't ju we've just started. I simply can't build my hopes on a foundation consisting of confusion, misery, and death. I see the world gradually being turned into a wilderness. It's wild. Here, I hear the ever approaching thunder, which will destroy us too. I can feel the sufferings of millions, and yet, if I look up into the heavens, who is this poetic girl? <laughs> Thirteen. Amazing. I think that it will come right, that this cruelty right. too will end, and that peace and tranquility will return again. You know, it's it, it must there must be deep spiritual religious underpinnings in this family. And I will say, you know, people criticize religion or even you know Christianity or you know, but it it takes something like this to give a person who's going through such hell on earth some type of hope even even if you say well it's all you know the, the church stinks and uh you know the relationships in the church stink. there's so much bad stuff that ha happens with religion oh yeah well this is a here's something that pretty good that happened with religion it's given this person some hope some some um just some light on a path even in the midst of just you can't even see your hand in front of your face. Everything is confusing. Everything seems hopeless. And it's giving this little girl something to, you know, some direction to move forward in. Hmm. It's quite impressive. And she's quite articulate, huh? I mean, yeah. Um, I think a lot of, you know, it's been a long, I don't know if I ever read the whole I'm book. I'm ready to I know, read this I know and get I'm, my kids to read it now. I know I'm, um, 
somewhat familiar with it from a long time ago, but I think one of the things that impresses people so much about her diaries is just the fact that even though she was under uh, such duress, you know, such a, such a um, terrifying circumstances, that she was bright and happy and, you know, could mm. look at life um, and experience life even uh, under those dire circumstances with such a brightness. And to me, I am from, from my perspective, which is developed by studies in Vedanta and studies in Bhakti and so on. When I look at that, I say, yeah, because she had a spiritual understanding, right? This is like a spiritual understanding. I mean, you're speaking from, okay, maybe her religious life gave her the spiritual understanding. Um, and whether it was that or not, I, I see spirituality in this. I see that, and, and again, what is spirituality? Let's not be vague about this, right? She's talking about, she's, she's watching the shifting circumstances. And, and as she's and experiencing those shifting circumstances, but holding on to something that's eternal, right? Mm. So she's saying, I get it that it's, it seems very dark right now, but I, I recognize that everything's shifting and it comes back. And I even, and, and I, I feel that so, I can experience that so deeply. I'm feeling that so profoundly that what it does is it's giving me the ability to look at every living being beyond their externals. Mm. And so even though people are behaving in horribly cruel ways, even when it's focused at me, I hold no resentment against them because I realize they're also caught up in the shifting you know, and, and they're very deeply confused about it. But I, this is spiritual insight. You know, this, this is, this is spirituality, right? It's, it's like, I know that on the, on the material, on, we've been talking the past couple of days of comparing conventional thought to transcendental thought, you know, how we speak conventionally, like, okay, I'm the boss. You're the, you're, you're the employee, you know, uh, right. you're big, you're small, you know, th that's all conventional <laughs> thinking. And then there's transcendental thinking, which is, I am a spirit. I'm not this changing body. I'm not the boss. I'm not the servant. All these things are just, they, they come and they go quickly. She's sitting here and saying these situations, certainly the circumstance is very dark, but it comes and it goes and it moves. And, and I believe that this will end and that peace and tranquility will turn again. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and, and again, this is so important. This lies at the core of all of our social um, issues, all our social problems, all our social disturbances is the lack of this kind of vision where I can look in, I, I can look past the person's um, external behavior and understanding that not that, not that the external behavior is um, overlooked entirely. It's not overlooked conventionally. It has to be dealt with, but on the transcendental level, I do it without, as soon as my resentment or hatred comes into it, I can't heal the problem anymore. I might be able to deal with it on some level, but I can't truly heal it at its core. The only thing, you know, and you got Martin Luther King saying this kind of thing, right? It's like, I forget the exact quote, but it's a famous one where he says, you know, you can't return hate with hate because only love can heal, you know? It, mm. it, it sounds sentimental and flowery, but there's a deep spiritual insight to it that's very true. You know, with that deep spiritual direct direction, um, you know, you could just talk about the situation she was in. And I don't know if I've ever told you, but I'm somewhat of a mystic <laughs> and <laughs> sooth <Really>? soothsayer. <laughs> and I have recently purchased a and part time botanist. Yeah, yeah. And I've recently purchased a crystal ball. So let me just share with you, Kostuba, if I may. Your vision what the next future? 10 years are going to be like. For the world, for you, for the world, for the world. <laughs> right. Are you ready? Buckle yeah, down, please, everybody. Just, it, just, no, go ahead. I, I just want to speak to our and say, please don't make a clip of this and post this anywhere. Anyone, okay? <laughs> Whatever he's about to say, we will share it amongst ourselves, and then we will forget it. Go ahead, right? Now. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Let's. Okay. I'm going to tell you exactly what the next ten years are going to be like. Okay. And the answer to that is pretty much the same. I be pretty, say, we don't know. <laughs> we don't know. It's going to be pretty much the same. Now, she was going through tragedy then. Okay. Is there going to be tragedy in the next 10 years? 
Yeah. There is going to be some part of the globe is going to go through this horrible tragedy where people are just killing other people mm -hmm. and people are running for their lives. I don't know where it's going to be. I'm not saying I know where it's going to be. It could be that here. will go on. And you know what? There's going to be people that are going to fall madly in love with each other. I predict that. There's going to be people who are going to divorce each other, hate each other, betray each other. That's going to happen too. You see, these things are always happening. And what it's like 10 years ago, it's going to be like 10 years from now as well. These mm. things always sort of change and they evolve and they devolve and they evolve and then devolve. And all we can do is figure out how we're going to sail our ship through all of it. Mm -hmm. We might be at a time where oh, America's good. America's in a great place. Everything's good. The, the, uh, our um, uh, finances are good. Our families are good. Things are working out smooth. And we're going to have to feel how to sail our spiritual ship in that. How to set our sail, so to speak, with the wind blowing behind us. It's going to be easy. Then there's going to be time the wind is blowing against us. Everything's falling apart. The economy's crashing. I'm out of work. My family's my family's in duress. The waves. I'm gonna sail my ship in this. The waves in the ocean. The waves of the ocean, man. Mm -hmm. So anyway, these things come, and what we're doing right now with this wisdom study is training ourselves to be better sailors, no matter what storm or how yeah, calm the she, seas are. She was sailing it so well, right? She was Anthony. sailing it well in yeah. in dangerous waters. And just to give the. Uh... You well, you know what always has to be mentioned. It, I, I believe what you're saying is it. What you're you're not saying that therefore there's no point in trying to help anyone, or therefore there's no point in trying to rectify anything. Are you? No, no, okay. no, I'm not. I'm just saying the material world exists. Like you know, you, I, you, you call you cause peace in one side. Somewhere in the globe right now there's some pain and there's some so, suffering so, so, and, and, so and it's behind the scenes. And sometimes it's right around your backyard. We'll say, oh, there's a war happening there. Forget it. There's like human trafficking happening under your nose or there's some like horrific. What are you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> human trafficking is bad. <laughs> it is. It's horrible. The more you hear about these things, the more horrible. Uh, and then, I, I and think then, the point, the point here is that. Is that, um, we can become a better instrument of peace if we deeply understand this because we'll there always you go. Be, that's the point because we'll always be coming from a, a place of 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 love you know sure. um we won't be harming as you know I, I think a lot of what i see nowadays is people speaking on in the name of justice and they're and they're hurting others at the same time you know like they're, right. they're manifesting we can manifest a lot well, of the same cruelty so that we're trying to combat if we don't have a, a spiritual attitude and in the i name think of being kind yeah they're just like they hate a whole demographic of people and, you and, can't and, be kind and hate at the same yeah, time yeah, and, and if I, think, I hate somebody there's part of part of me that hates myself and there's part a big part of me that hates god i i think there's um something to this too that like i don't know unique but something that's emphasized so um, prominently in Eastern thinking uh, is this idea of cycles, right? That it's like, it, you know, cycles. creation and destruction and creation again. It's not just yep. creation and destruction. It's creation, destruction, creation, destruction, birth, death, birth, death. You know, uh, the, the, the recognition that the nature of the material realm, not the spiritual, but the material realm is always shifting, always going through cycles. Just even that, which she's got. She's got it. You know, she's she's clued right into it and it's helping her deal with these very difficult circumstances. Mm. I remain Frank. Amazing stuff. Anyway, that was great. Good, good nugget. Good nugget. Good nugget. I'm, I want to read this book. Maybe we should read this book while we're in Florida. A little uh, start a little book reading group or a little community. Yeah. Come together, discuss it. I'm at about a 13 year old reading level. <laughs> okay. It should be pretty good for me. <laughs> All right. All right, ready? Let's dive into the sweet honey pot of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Narayanam namaskritya naram chayiva narotamam devim saraswatim vyasam tatojayam madirayat. Before we start in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. 
Unto Naren Ryan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta Prayeshva Badreshu Nityam Bhagavat Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki by regular attendance and classes in the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotee. All that is troublesome in the heart will become eradicated in loving service to the Supreme Lord who is praised with transcendental songs will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Ajnana Tamarandasya Ajnana Anjana Salakaya Chaksurun Militam Yena Tazmai Shri Gurveda Maha I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My teachers are opening my eyes with a torchlight of knowledge. I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. My that crystal a, ball. That was almost a dramatical reading dr- of that verse. It was dramatical. Was born in the darkness. <laughs> dramatical? <laughs> dramatical. <laughs> you make it up words? <laughs> no, why not? <laughs> dramatical, is that what it is? <laughs> I think it's dramatic. <laughs> no, it would be dramatic, yeah. I was just, I was just testing you. There, theatrical. Right? Theatrical. I can do dramatical and theatrical. Why not? Why isn't it theatric then? Why don't we have clear rules of grammar in this language? <laughs> oh. All right. All right. Hey, we got a new this, chapter. A new today. chapter, madam and monsieur. This is called Judd Bart instructs King Rahugana. We were already in a little bit of instructions, but now we're going to dive right in. Yeah. I think I, everybody knows where we at. Maybe we should just dive in. Okay. But uh, why would you tell at least what chapter we're in? Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, chapter uh, Canto Five, Chapter Eleven. Okay, Text One. But oh, we can say this, Ragnar. We can say this. <laughs> <laughs> Get your two cents in here, because still, but go. We can we can say that. Um, so now Judd Bart is going to. The king just came to him saying, "You you've been instructing me on this totally transcendental level, but isn't it a fact that I am the king?" Isn't it a fact, you know, that that these external things are real and that we have to right. recognize them? And, you know, that can we just are we meant to abandon all of that like, kind of thought? Right. How much do you get involved and how much do you just like let go? And isn't just letting go being like rolling over and playing dead? It's this might like be that. the question of material existence, you know, for a person with a conscience. How much do you get involved and how much do you back off? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and but what's going to happen is Judd Judd Bart is kind of an, an extreme person, you know, like in this sense, he's yeah. um look his father was Rishabh Dave, right? Yeah, I mean several lifetimes back, but but um who was this person that you know was w- also walking around like a crazed madman just so that he could have his spiritual space, <laughs> you know, like yeah. also in- entirely removed from society and so on. So Judd Bart is going to come back. You know, there's conventional thought. Okay, there there is a, a boss and there is a, an employee. There is a fat person and a thin person. And then there's a the spiritual thought. No, those are just temporary movements in the material energy, which has no existential, you know, truth. They, they come and go like a dream. Focus on the transcendental. Focus on spirit, which is eternal. That's your real identity. Keep your mind focused on that level of thought. Judd Bart isn't going to come. He's going to respond to this inquiry by just pushing the transcendental thought. He's going to. It's this is one just seventeen verses of just pure transcendental thought coming from Judd Bart. Okay, it's um, functional identity and what's it? Constitutional yeah. identity. Functional and uh, fundamental. So he's going to be okay. speaking from he, the fundamental. Okay. Angle. Judd Bart said, "My dear King." Now he spoke with a British accent. <laughs> My dear king, although you are not at all experienced, you are trying to speak like a very experienced man. Consequently, you cannot be considered an experienced man. Very Bhagavad Gita-esque there, is it not? Yeah. Although you are speaking learned words, right? Yeah. Yeah, an experienced yeah, person does not speak the way you are speaking about the relationship between the master and the servant or about material pains and pleasures. These are simply external activities. Any advanced, experienced man, considering the absolute truth, does not talk in this way. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's like, it's almost like if Judd Bartha had Anne Frank right there, he'd be like, look at this girl. Yeah. You you see how she's capable of, of, of thinking this way? Yeah. My dear King. Talks of the relationship between the master and the servant, the king and the subject, and so forth, are simply talks about material activities. People interested in material activities, which are expounded in the Vedas, 
are intent on performing material sacrifices and placing faith in their material activities. For such people, spiritual advancement is definitely not manifest. Okay, this is interesting stuff here, Reverend. Yeah. So, hey, ho, 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 ho. I said this is interesting. You're like, yeah, well, let's keep going. <laughs> let's go. Well, I was on more interesting stuff. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, but let's discuss it a bit. Okay, so he's pushing transcendental thought. He's pushing what we call Guiana, right? Satvam. You, you know, like you, you're telling me. He's saying you're not the king. I'm not the subject. Get this through your head, right? He's pushing that. You know, sometimes like say within um ashram life right ashram circles yeah even we use euphemisms to try to cultivate this kind of thought like what where are you going with this can you think of any any come to mind spiritual master no no what what i mean is like in other words well i'll give you an example okay like we'll be um, like within ashrams, like people will, rather than saying like that person died, well, no, they didn't die. The soul is eternal. How could, you know, they'll right. say they left the body. They left their body. Yeah. Right. You know, it's, so it's, it's like, it's like, it's like saying, let's let, even within our language and our phrasings and, and so on, let's try to cultivate, let's not cultivate illusion. Yeah. Let's not cultivate illusion. Let's try to cultivate, uh, this reality yeah. perspective. You know, and, and now, and now what, what's, so Jadabar just pushing that on him. And, um, and then he's saying that, you know, the king, a lot of what the king did in those days was, okay, people, right? You know, like, we've got a community here. Now we got to all stay focused, right? Like, we can't lose touch. Everything that we have in our kingdom, the food that we get, you know, the, 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 the shelter that we have in life you know the sun the moon the rain the, the earth all of these things they are being provided for us and if we want them to be continue to be provided you know uh with you know in plentitude mm. then what these ancient texts are teaching us is that we should express our gratitude for this it would be the, expressing the gratitude is is good for us it's reality. It, it's recognizing that we're being provided for, and by and through the the ritual of demonstrating that gra that gratitude, not only will it bring more of what's good for us, but the king knows it actually cultivates the right sentiments in the people. And, and when you have those right sentiments, um, you you get along better with each other, you know, and you become better people. And and, and that platform of better people is the platform from which we can become deeply spiritual people. So the king is creating events, right? In our, in our culture, our events are created basically due to what can make some money. If we can get, you know, 18,000 people into Madison Square Garden for whatever, we're going to do it, <laughs> right? <Yep. laughs> it can be big cars like driving on top of each other with like massive wheels or something. You ever go to one of those? No, they're great. <laughs> yes. They're great. They're not. Right? Me and they are. They're actually great. Okay, I'm not Monster sure if Judd Bart would 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 um. Judd Bart could... probably wouldn't like monster trucks. <laughs> okay, thank you, Elise, for and giving me that. This is probably <laughs> the first time in the history of the world that Judd Bart and monster trucks were mentioned in the same sentence. Okay, but thank you, Elise, for granting me that. So, 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 but, but, but here is the point, right? Like, occasionally we may have um some kind of big public gathering you know like on a national level that's being promoted you know, you know but in a lot of times that'll have something to do with like some some tragedy you know yeah um but here there was something that it says like it's 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 almost like what's the word people use all the time not preemptive but proactive yeah. you know it's like hey we should we shouldn't just after disaster say please god help us we should be recognizing um, and demonstrating our gratitude through when you're reading Prabhupada's books, the, 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 it will always use the word sacrifice. Um, mm -hmm. But let's just use the word ritual, right? Through ritual, we should be demonstrating this. So the king is, is organizing these, these rituals, these, these you know, as to, all together as a group, we're going to demonstrate our appreciation and, and our gratitude. But let's you know, change sacrifice into appreciation. 
Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's a better word. Sacrifice. I have this like Santeria. It, 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 it builds builds up this like cutting the head off a chicken, offering the blood yeah, to so the it's not uh, like god. That. Yeah. Yeah. And, and 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 um, it's kind of like these rituals aren't the deepest spiritual engagements. Mm. They're positive. You could call them religious, but commonly. I mean, of course, it all depends on the depth of the understanding in which one is g going into it. But commonly, the idea was, hey, every, for the common people, for the people that aren't deeply spiritual, the idea was like a carrot is kind of hung in front of you. That if we do, if we do these rituals, we'll get more material prosperity. Mm -hmm. Right. Whereas like the, the, the person that's engaging everyone in the rituals has a, hopefully has a bit of a deeper understanding. They don't always, you know, but hopefully they have a bit of a deeper understanding that this is a step forward for people that would normally just um, ignore the fact that everything's being provided, lose touch with the fact that there is a higher power and that they're dependent and so on, uh, and become hardened by that and become more ignorant. And, and move in darker, more dark directions. So, so here, what's being said is almost like King. You know, you you've been engaged in everyone and doing rituals for material prosperity, and you've lost touch with the deeper spiritual insights. Now you're sitting. You, you've gone through. You've demonstrated it by the way that you just dealt with me in such a sarcastic and callous way. And so, so he's talking about these. He, he says here, people invested in material activities which are expounded in the Vedas. Those are those rituals right. and all of that. Right? Uh, they are intent on performing material sacrifices, right? these rituals, and placing their faith in material activities. For such people, spiritual advancement is definitely not manifest. Right? You need to get your thinking on, this, on a spiritual level. You need to see beyond all of the, the roles and the, the, the material dharma that you're deeply involved in and understand there's something much deeper. And then he's going to hit him with a hard verse right here. Not this text three, it's a powerful one. Okay, let's get him. A dream becomes automatically known to a person as false and immaterial. And similarly, one eventually realizes that material happiness in this life or the next on this planet or a higher planet is actually insignificant, right? A dream becomes automatically known to a person as false. When they wake up immaterial right like oh like my crazy dream last night my satanic dream what did i do satanic yesterday that i had a satanic dream this morning well that you don't go there just say oh i was on the not phone today satan <laughs> not <on>. today satan <laughs> i should have said that in the dream you ever try to ever like go into your dream and try to like force a reality no i don't believe this this isn't true you never do that Ever, like I, I, use I, I, reason and logic in dreams if 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 i have it's been like hardly ever and it's been so long ago that i'm out of touch with it, or at least i'm not aware of it i've forgotten i've had krishna ones where i'm having a bad dream and i was like krishna no one can hurt me because i'm taking shelter of krishna i've done stuff like that and, and you know you're going through some <laughs> no like one can hurt me you know <laughs> i just say, say things Leave like that alone. in my dream <laughs> <laughs> Krishna, you can be, I do that. I take shelter of Krishna in my bad dream sometimes. Okay. Well, now, now, now what Jada Bard is saying here, look, look what he just said. A I, dream. I didn't finish it. I didn't finish it here. Let me, let me okay. go. Okay. So, uh, so he's saying, yeah, this, is, this stuff is all temporary, like a dream, right? On high planets or low planets. When one realizes this, the Vedas, although an excellent source, he's commenting on the Vedas, are insufficient to bring about direct knowledge of truth. Why? Okay. Because the Vedas talk about how to like um, uh, how to upgrade, how to upgrade your material life. Right. Uh, just like, yeah. oh, I'm flying to Florida. How can I fly first class? Right. Mm -hmm. How can I fly? I'm sick of flying coach. How can I fly business or first class? And that's what the Vedas do. It talks about we don't even understand higher planets. Well, but let's, it's speaking let's, about let's, before you go further, the Rogas, let's just I want you to I want you to pick up here. But let's clarify something when we say the Vedas. So that or we can be sure all our listeners are aware what exactly what we're talking about. Okay. So there are four books called the the, the Vedas, and then there's a larger uh, body of literature that we can call Vedic literature, and a culture that stems from it called the Vedic culture, right? So sometimes when we speak of the Vedic literature, you know, we're speaking we may be speaking about Srimad Bhagavatam or even Bhagavad Gita, you know, which come later. 
when here when he says the vedas he he's being very specific about the, those four books the four vedas right yeah and he's saying and those four books have a particular focus which which is material prosperity through piety you know in, in which is largely done through the through rituals and dharmic living right so he's saying people do that for the purpose of experiencing a better material life it's a step forward but he's saying but but that's insufficient to bring about direct knowledge of the truth and mm -hmm. dear king you've been a little caught up in that insufficient end of these this literature you need to start thinking on a on another level so now please continue Rana, because i just want to throw that one here it's aren't the vedas a good thing yes yes, yes know, but yeah okay text Oh, I thought you were going to, I wanted you to continue where you're going. When one realizes this, the Vedas, although an excellent source, are insufficient about bringing direct knowledge of the truth. You know, there's just this verse, Abrahma, Bhubana, Loka, from the highest planet of the material world to the lowest are ultimately places of suffering. Why? Yeah. Repeated birth and death take place there. So in, in the big picture, in the big zoom out, it's all temporary. I think it's safe to say sometimes, you know, you really get all your desires met. And you're sort of get to this point of big deal, big deal. I'm flying first class, big well, deal. That's exactly what there's when, you know, they talk about this progression of Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha, right? It's right. So it's, it, 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 that's exactly what you're saying here, Raghunath, right? It's like, you could continue with your thought and then I'll get back to this. Um, okay. Uh, well, that, well <laughs> so uh, with, your with my or thought, or maybe you're done with it. Uh, I have no more thoughts. <laughs> you know, it's just sort of like sometimes you see people, especially young people, who become rich at a young age. I don't know. I just see them scrolling, and people are just like throwing, mo like counting money, throwing money. I was just like, what's the point of like showing your wealth? It's like, what are you going to do with your money? Like, what are we going to do while we're here? Like, what is the point of? Our vacation. Your vacation is good if it can actually get you rest, rest you up so you can do something great for the world. Like, why are we here in the first place? So if, if all we're doing is looking for ease, what kind of life is that? All right. Uh, let's look. Uh, what can we do positive to assist the world uh, while we're here? We just don't want an easy life. We want to we want a contribution and that gives us substance, et cetera. So. Um, and a reason to wake up in the morning. But if we're just looking for how can I go to whatever you want to call it, a higher planet, that's what the Vedas would call it, but we don't even believe in those. So we just think a higher level of life. My car is the better car. My home is a little bigger. I have an extension on my home. I have a little bit more land. My apartment's a little, I've got an extra room in my apartment. Ultimately, like who cares that much? It's Is it really going to like enhance your joy? So it, 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 the yogis see in the biggest picture of thing from the highest planet to the lowest planet. Ultimately, they're temporary. And, 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 and the um, converse is also true. You going through some pain right now? I got some news for you. It's going to be over very soon. That seasonal change. Winter's over. Spring's coming. That's going to change. All these things are changing. Don't get <laughs> hung up on the season. Don't be like, I love spring. I love spring. I got news for you. Spring's going to be over in a moment. Then it's going to get sweltering hot. And don't get attached to summer if you like summer. You know why? Autumn's coming. And, and these things are always in cycles. It's pulling us back to that. E the Vedas, what it really does is pull us back to that evenness. And that's where Krishna's opening Wait, game in the Gita is, you know, the which is basically in the same verse right here, right? It's Krishna saying, you know what? Those words of the Vedas that promise you so much, those flowery words, you got to understand these will give you these will get you lost. And it was Krishna it, throws it out in the beginning, in the very beginning of the Gita. It, it was an interesting phrasing here that when one realized you, you said that you reach a certain point where you're like, so what? You know, like, OK, I got the house. I got that. I got, but so what? When one realizes this, it says the, the Vedas, although an excellent source, they, they can take you a step forward. Those four Vedas and the rituals that they describe mm -hmm. and so on but they are insufficient to bring about direct knowledge of the truth. You're not going to become, you know, deeply realized, deeply spiritual. You're not going to transcend um, your sufferings. 
from that platform. You will stay stuck on the cycle going up and down and up and down and up and down. Whatever you gain materially, you'll lose that too. And then you'll suffer from that as well. And, and, and another reality about uh, uh, the high end of uh, materialism is like, okay, I do. Well, you know what? You don't understand. I like luxury. I like fine things. I'm very Venusian. I can news for you. Then there Venusian. is incredible pain. When those things break down, get lost, get stolen, get scraped or scratched or stain stained. Stained. <laughs> there, there's stained. <laughs> yes, you know why. That yeah. sounds like that's coming from the spiller. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Have because of thing, because because ultimately, very beautiful things of this world. I get it. We love beautiful things. They get They're also temporary. And if you get very attached to that beauty, I, I got news for you. It, it, it just gets destroyed. It, it, that, that's part of the material world. Mm. You feel, I want a white couch in my house. Well, I got news for you. White couches <laughs> get dirty. It's, white couches get dirty. It's like that uh, Seinfeld episode where they, it's all there in Seinfeld. It's all there. All where, the betas are contained. George in gave Seinfeld. the gift of the cashmere sweater, but it had like one little red spot on it. You got it at a discount. <laughs> it's a perfect sweater, cashmere. Use the highest quality, you know, <laughs> wool and everything. It's but there's one tiny, tiny, tiny little thing it just ruins it. It's enough to drive you crazy. Okay, but but I think we're pretty much out of time. But oh, you know, huh? I mean, yeah, yeah. But but you I know, laugh it, too hard. That's not good for my hernia repair. Keep keep it keep it together but but in any case you know just just to re just to to tie this whole thing up you know it let's go back to anne frank you know it's it, we're, we're putting these we're reading two things parallel today we're reading a 13 year old girls ru running from the stormtroopers not today hitler and we're reading um the the, the ancient 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 story of this realized you know, um, Abaduta mm. speaking instructions to a king, and we're seeing a similar thread running through them both, right? That Anne Frank had this. She's mm. she had what what Jada Barta was talking about. She may not have even fully understood how much of it she had. <laughs> you know, like she might not even, right. you know, but but she had it. She could she could recognize this whole thing shifting. And although it appears very dark, there's always light beyond this darkness. And, 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 and I can, and, and that was giving her this most beautiful, what we can call Samadarshana, right? This equal vision that I see, I can see the heart of every living being. I can see what it really is. Not just the, not just the, um, the warped mind that the heart is lying behind, but I can see past that warped mind and I can see the heart. And when I see that, I see that it's pure, that it's good, that it's that it's spirit. She had spiritual vision. All right. I, um, I wonder if her parents were very spiritual or if she was like lifting her parents or their parents were lifting her. Read the diary. I, you know, I'm going to read the diary, I think. And uh, Mara, can you read the takeaways? Because you know what? A lot of things are happening today. And I want to I want some like a uh, little goodies to bring with me, put in my pocket, pull them out. I got goodies for you. <laughs> She's got goodies. <laughs> we need hope to move forward. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Confusion, misery, and death are part of the shifting material energies. They are. Yeah. Yeah. Confusion. What is it? Misery, misery and death. Misery and yep. death. Yeah. Good morning. <laughs> we need spiritual insight to heal hateful behavior. That's right. Only way. Yeah. Only way. Wisdom trains us to be better sailors. Of sorts. Are you I a do. sailor? Are you are you a seaman as I'm well, Raghunath? Are you are you a, a sailor of part time of sorts? All right, Krishna. We can become Straight. instruments of peace. You are too much, Raghunath. Right? Hare Krishna. <laughs> Same, just saying, Hare Krishna. What? All right. You can't be kind and hate. Nope. Can't be kind and hate. Be proactive in our appreciation. Okay. All right. Don't get hung up on the season. It's all temporary. Not today, winter. And 
All the Vedas are within Seinfeld. Uh, oh, it's Brady. Yeah. <laughs> Shorts. I'm not sure if I. <laughs> One sense. <laughs> I don't talk about going at Swarga Loka. A lot of it's there. At least a lot of it is there. A lot of it's there. A lot of it's there. And in Shakespeare. Okay. I'm going to put that out there. Which I stole from uh, Shantaram. Okay, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Remember Wisdom of the Sages retreat in Italy. We're doing this. But if you're thinking about doing it, you got to do it because it's happening. Okay? And then we're all going to party crash Scranton Davies' wedding. How about that? What do you say we all go to Scranton Davies' wedding and blow the whole damn thing out? <laughs> She's like, stop. Chanting and dancing and her, like, no! <laughs> and her mother's going to be like, who the hell are all these people dancing at the wedding? Chanting in, in mantras. They're not Indian, Mom. They're universal yeah. mantras of peace and love. You know, they're different. I knew this one. I know this one, devotee. You do too, Raghunath, you know. The Harry Krishna Party Crashers? That would be a great little skit, well, wouldn't it? Well, hold on and let me share a story with you. What do you got? You know Prithu Prabhu? Yeah. He's yeah. just one of these people that, you know, just had the ability to just, like, had a certain charisma that... Oh, yeah. Everybody loved him. And so he was... A friend of mine had picked him up in the airport in Dallas. And in Texas, they have those highways. And every highway has, like, a beater road that runs parallel yeah yeah yeah, yeah yeah and so they were on the highway and he was looking down at the feeder road and you yeah. could see like an indian gathering going on <laughs> did right? he crash that wedding and this is in texas so he says what is going on he's german right what is going on over there let us drive over there and see what is happening you know like, <laughs> you know, he just got off the airplane right it's like maybe there's some service we can do there so he <laughs> so they drove over there he he broke into the indian wedding Gave a whole talk and let a kirtan and had the whole place going wild. <laughs> you know, everybody loved it. Yeah, that's took, everybody's like, where did this okay. man come from? He came the right to the wedding. Like, oh, great story. Please don't do that at my wedding. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Bro, that's good experiment. Granted, Maybe I can pull it off. Oh, beautiful people. So 200-hour uh, bhakti vinyas training with me, Yogeshri, and Bobby Marchand. Make sure you check out my link. I'm well, gonna, I think you're giving too many of these announcements. I think you just... Not, how many can we take at one day? Got to put it out there. Got to put it out there, <laughs> put it out okay. there to the people, my friend. You know, I keep on thinking your Chris, your shirt says Polo Krishna instead of Bolo Krishna. I was like, is that a polo, polo like a, a mock polo shirt? What does it say there? Nichananda Chandra gave it to me. Bolo Krishna, Bajo Krishna. Bajo Krishna, Koro Krishna Shiksha. Koro Krishna Shiksha. I like it.